So anyone who's watched Blue Peter knows that it's a lot of adventurous stuff, daredevil stuff amongst everything else. And I'd always wanted to skydive. Eventually my opportunity came in around about 2003 and we went out to San Diego with the RAF Falcons. I was a bit nervous, never jumped out of a plane before. And we got underway. And the way they train you is that you have an instructor either side of you as you come out the plane. And when you pull your chute at four and a half thousand feet, then you're on your own. But for the, the free fall bit, they're just getting your body position right. Then we came to jump number four. So up we go to about 12 and a half thousand feet. Out we go, plummeting down 120 miles per hour. And then came the moment to pull the chute. Pulled it. And it felt a lot longer than it was, but nothing happened. I, I just remember this sensation amidst the confusion of what was happening, that someone was kind of whacking me on the back. Thankfully, a few moments later, the chute appeared was above my head and down we came. And after every jump, they would show me the video of the jump. They did say later on, we should never have shown you this film. I can see Toby and Roger, that thumping I felt was them punching my backpack to get the chute out and then eventually it comes out. I totally lost my bottle. I think I did two more jumps, the trip came to an end, I couldn't get my courage back and ended up doing a really bad film with the San Diego Fire Brigade as a kind of make up the money thing. And then about 10 months later, I said to the program, look, how about we make a film? So we made a program about it, which was quite powerful because it was about not being able to overcome your fears. And, you know, sometimes in life, we don't always succeed at something. But I said, wouldn't it be amazing to go back and face my fear and go again? They agreed reluctantly because it's a lot of money. And out we went to San Diego again. And you know how smells and sights and sounds fire off so many potent memories? It's the same hotels. We walk back into the hotel, smells the same, and all the memories of the year before came flooding back. I could start to feel my heart going. I know we're jumping the next morning. I'm thinking I've made a massive mistake here. And I've got a really good friend called Phil Wall who's been like a bit of a Christian mentor to me down the years. And he'd said, look, if you need to ever call me while you're away, so he knew I was a bit nervous. He said, give me a call. So that morning I'd woken up, having had about one hour's sleep, I'm as white as a sheep. My director is looking at me over breakfast saying, what's wrong with you? Are you losing your bottle again? I'm like, no, no, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Inside, I'm in turmoil. And just before we leave in the van, I thought, I'm just gonna get some donuts for the RAF boys, good, good start. So I went to Dunkin' Donuts across the street. As I went across there, I rang Phil. So it's late evening back in the UK. I said, Phil, I'm in trouble. I can't do it, I've lost my bottle because that night, what had kept me awake all night was this one question. If those two bits of fabric and those nylon bits of string that join your two parachutes, your main one and your reserve one to your back fail, you're gonna find out tomorrow if that God you believe in is real or not. And it messed with my head. So I told Phil as I called him what had happened last night. And I said, I'm just, I'm, in, I'm a mess. I don't think I can do it. He said, right, I'm gonna pray for you right now. And he said, this amazing prayer. And it's very short and simply just said, Father God, I pray right now you give Simon courage and I pray that he would know that you are for real. Amen. They said, go and do it, mate. Come on, you can do this. Got the donuts and Dunkin' Donuts. Just about to cross over the highway to get back to the hotel. Felt a tap on my left shoulder. Looked to my side. There's a young guy, never seen him before. And he just simply said, I'm not going to do the American accent. He just said, I want you to know Jesus loves you and is for real. And I sort of looked back ahead of me, and I looked back again, and he vanished. Now, unless he was quicker than Usain Bolt, I don't know where he's gone, because there's a long street and there's no alleyway I can see. This guy has disappeared. And it was an amazing moment. It, I, I believe firmly that was an angel. I really do believe that, that we have a certain impression of God's angels, but actually they come in human form as well. And in that moment, I went, wow, Phil's just prayed that prayer. This guy's appeared out of nowhere. He's just said the very words I needed to hear that Phil would have prayed that I would hear. He's real. Why, why am I even doubting this God is real? And I remember that first jump. Yeah, I was nervous. Of course I was. But it was amazing. And then we jumped about 40 times over the next 10 days. I've got amazing videos at home, me skydiving in shorts and a t-shirt, having the time of my life. I was doing somersaults out on a plane by the end of the week. That's, that's God. That, that guy there, that has to be God had sent him. That's, that's way too big a coincidence in a foreign city, far away from home. A mate of mine back in the UK prays that prayer and moments later, there's a guy I've never met before telling me God's for real.